Architects that design buildings and the people who write the standards and specs for building materials and people like myself who protect people who occupy those buildings need to understand how materials react when they're involved in fire. If we understand how materials react when they're involved in fire, then we, all of us, can do our jobs with more confidence. Today's architectural designs go beyond traditional building materials like wood, steel, and concrete. The need for a contemporary, high-tech look has brought many new materials into play, and among them are many plastics for trim and glazing. And because, in general, plastics are considered to be combustible, many people are concerned about their behavior if a fire should break out, as well they should. However, about the only thing most people have to refer to are fire safety test results published in a variety of building codes. Tests like the Steiner Tunnel Test, which attempts to determine how much smoke the burning material creates. The Horizontal Burn Test, which reveals how quickly the flame spreads over the material's surface and the ignition test, which determines how easily the material will catch fire and sustain combustion. But these fire safety codes may not tell the whole story, or they may be misapplied or misunderstood. Seeing is believing, and one picture is worth a thousand words. What you're about to see are actual flame tests comparing the performance of two popular plastic families used today in architecture, acrylic and polycarbonate. The tests were run under controlled conditions in this fire tower, a six-story training structure used by fire departments across the country to simulate real-life fire situations. In the first test, two-foot by four-foot window-sized panes of acrylic and polycarbonate were installed in frames on the second and third stories. Each panel was a quarter inch thick. Material like this is used in schools, hospitals, on walkways, and barrel vaults. The panels were subjected to flames from a standard sand burner, one foot square and six inches deep. Each burner was fueled with propane gas under a constant pressure of five pounds per square inch. The heat from a sand burner this size is roughly the same as the BTUs from a typical executive armchair or an average office wastebasket that's on fire. After two minutes, 40 seconds, both sand burners were shut off. Now, with the burners off, you can see that the acrylic continues to burn on its own. The polycarbonate melts, but it's not burning. After five minutes, 20 seconds, the acrylic is dripping. These flaming drops can easily ignite flammable surfaces below. It's easy to see, with the heat these flames produce, how the acrylic might raise the flash point of other materials around it, causing a dangerous situation for occupants or firefighters. Five minutes, 40 seconds have elapsed, and you can see that the polycarbonate is not sustaining combustion and retaining its structural integrity. At the same time, the acrylic is burning vigorously. The second test was conducted with polycarbonate and acrylic twin wall material, each eight millimeters thick. Conditions and ignition were the same as with the first test. Material like this is used for greenhouses, industrial overglazing, skylights, and similar applications. After only one minute, the polycarbonate melts from the heat of the sand burners, but it's not burning. The acrylic, however, is dripping, and the flaming drops can easily spread the fire. The acrylic is fully engulfed and could be raising the temperature of the surrounding materials to flashpoint if this were a real application. You can see how that could endanger anyone in the room. The fire has not spread with the polycarbonate. Many people are beginning to realize that some of the codes and the tests they're based on don't reflect today's real-world conditions. So new tests are being developed that more accurately evaluate how a material will react under a fire situation, like the rate of heat released or the oxygen consumption rate test. Because the acrylic was burning so vigorously, it was decided to turn off the sand burners after three minutes. 
At the end of the test, you can see what's left of the acrylic and can imagine the intensity of heat generated during that time. And while the polycarbonate has melted and is no longer serviceable, it did not sustain combustion. The third test involved cast acrylic and laminated polycarbonate. Each panel was one and a quarter inches thick. The conditions of the test were the same as before, and the sand burners ignited. Inch and a quarter material like this sample being tested is used in correctional facilities, financial institutions, and for secured storefronts. After four minutes, the sand burners were turned off. Now we can see the polycarbonate barely burning. However, the acrylic panel is almost fully involved. Flames this intense can easily cause nearby materials to reach their flash point, creating a hazardous situation for those in the room. Eleven minutes into the test, and the acrylic threatens to dislodge and fall, which could spread the fire to surfaces below. At this same time, while the polycarbonate is distorted, its mechanical integrity is secure, and the panel is barely supporting combustion. A chunk of burning acrylic this large can do a lot of damage if it should fall on a combustible surface, or injury should it land on evacuees or a firefighter below. Imagine these flames licking at a ceiling. It wouldn't take very long for the entire interior of the room to become involved, putting anyone who might be there at risk, including those who are coming to their rescue. The initial cost of panels like these is a minor consideration when you take into account the impact on the building and its human inhabitants that choosing the wrong material might have. In each of these tests, comparing polycarbonate with acrylic, several factors become apparent. Polycarbonate does not readily support combustion. Acrylic does. Any combustion sustained by the polycarbonate is localized. With the acrylic, it quickly spreads over the surface of the material. Polycarbonate material melts, but remains intact. Acrylic drips, and that can easily ignite other flammable surfaces, spreading the fire that much more quickly. Selecting which material to use, of course, involves a number of decisions. Cost, naturally, is one of them. From a fire safety standpoint, however, conditions being equal, polycarbonate architectural materials do not readily support combustion, and when they do, they burn slowly and with less emitted heat than acrylic. That means occupants in the room involved have more time to evacuate and there's far less chance that other articles in the room will reach their flash point when polycarbonate is used. You saw evidence of that with your own eyes during a series of tests conducted under the guidance of a respected fire consultant. The demonstrations you just saw should clarify how acrylics and polycarbonate glazings compare under controlled burn tests. You saw the tests and you saw the results of these tests. And if you're still concerned about safety, think about this. Most fire departments around the United States use this helmet. It has a high impact resistance, resists chipping, and transmits less heat to the wearer. In fact, it is the only thermoplastic headgear that meets the requirements of the National Fire Protection Association. What's it made out of? Polycarbonate.